It, I know it, it just feels like, oh my gosh, what's coming? So, so let me, I'm, I'm the lead pastor of this church. I plan on being the lead pastor of this church for the next 20 years. Feels stupid. Thank you. Feel dumb. Another megachurch pastor has been accused of inappropriate behavior, prompting some to speculate that this is another Ravi Zacharias affair. And the reason we believe in an absoluteness to sexuality is because we believe sexuality is sacred as well. And that's why we make our choice that same way. Ravi had died by the time the report was published. In addition, the investigation said that he had engaged in inappropriate sexual behavior for numerous years. Unfortunately, he covered up his sins for years while preaching the gospel. These allegations have been confirmed to be true. My name is Sarah Davis. I'm the CEO of RZIM and the oldest daughter of the late Ravi Zacharias. When I was first presented with the evidence that the allegations were true, it quaked my very being. For the rest of my life, I will have to hold in tension this man that I knew and love with the man that we know now committed these actions. Matt Chandler, the senior pastor of the Village Church and a megachurch pastor, has stepped down temporarily due to an inappropriate conversation with a woman on Instagram via DMs or direct messages. Matt Chandler is an evangelical pastor who, for the most part, preaches accurate biblical doctrine. Yet, his woke theology has been extensively criticized by many. Many individuals on social media call this a massive sex scandal, similar to Carl Lentz, Ravi Zacharias, and others. Is Matt Chandler's inappropriate text to a married woman a full-fledged sexual scandal, or are these people on social media making it appear that way? We will look at this more closely shortly later in the video. We share practical things every pastor and Christians in general must do now to avoid being caught in sexual sin. Plus, we will share an official statement from the elders at the Village Church. Be sure to watch till the end. It's harder seeing you. Several months ago, um, a woman approached me um, outside here in the foyer. Um, she had some concerns for how I was DMing on Instagram with a friend of hers. Um, I, I didn't think I had done anything wrong in that. My wife knew that, her husband knew that, um, and, and yet there were a couple of things that she said that were disorienting to me. Um, and so I immediately um, came into the room, I found Chairman of the Elder Board, Jason Swords, found Josh Patterson, other lead pastor, and said, this is what this person just told me. Uh, and then I went home, Lauren wasn't with me that night, and I told Lauren, this is what was said to me um, tonight. So, based on his statement, Matt appears to have done the proper thing in telling the church's elders and his wife about the woman who confronted him for an inappropriate chat with a married woman on Instagram. The elder team did the right thing by following up on the case. So far, so good. From there, uh, the elders began to look into, because that's what they're supposed to do. Uh, because we cannot be a church where anyone uh, is above the scriptures and above the high heavenly call uh, into Christ Jesus. And so they looked into um, the, the conversation between me and um, this other woman, uh, and they had some concerns. Um, and those concerns were not that our messaging was romantic or sexual, it was that our conversations were unguarded and unwise. And because I don't ever want there to be secrets between us, the concerns were really about frequency and familiarity. We believe in brother-sister relationships here. Um, and yet there was a frequency that moved past that, and there was a familiar familiarity that played itself out in coarse and foolish joking. It's unbefitting uh, of someone in my position as a lead pastor, and as an elder, I'm held to a higher standard and fell short of that higher standard. It is commendable that the elders at Village Church did not sweep the issue under the carpet, but rather they investigated further, and here is why. 1 Timothy 3 lays several qualifications that anyone in the position of pastor, overseer, or bishop must possess. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, Vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. 1 Timothy 3, verse 2. Other translations use words such as above reproach, sober-minded, self-controlled, and respectable. 
it is unacceptable for a pastor to often exchange private messages with another lady who is not his wife. The elders of Village Church determined that Matt Chandler had crossed the line and that he should step down from teaching and preaching at the church. According to the elders' statement, which we shall examine shortly, this was both disciplinary action and a developmental opportunity for Matt Chandler. So the elders have decided, and I think they're right, that my inability to see what I was in uh, probably has some, is revealing some unhealth in me. And I don't know if that's tied to the pace I run or uh, the difficulty of the last six, seven years, but I agree with them. Um, and so in their grace to me and my family, um, they've decided, and again, I think they're right, um, to put me on a leave of absence, um, uh, starting uh, immediately from preaching and teaching at um, the village church. The word of God holds me to a certain standard, and, and I, need to, I need to live into that, and, and I fell short. And, man, I'm, I'm apologizing to my family, to you, to all involved in this situation. Forgive me. I love you. Eager for the other side of this, whatever God has for us. You might be wondering, shouldn't Matt step down permanently as the lead pastor at the Village Church? We believe that while Matt's actions and behavior were inappropriate, they did not disqualify him from being a pastor. We hope and pray that Matt will use this opportunity to grow and look for ways to guard himself against sexual sins. And we see two expressions of sanctification. One is abstaining from sexual immorality, or to say it in a positive light, purity, sexual purity. And the other is love. These two things are two of the greatest manifestations that you truly are growing in Christ. And to not have these things is one of the greatest demonstrations that you are like a new convert at best. True love for God, true love for others, will lead to sexual purity. And sexual impurity is one of the greatest demonstrations of lovelessness, of self-love, of self-idolatry, and of lovelessness to God and lovelessness to those around us. Here are excerpts from the Village Church's elder statement regarding Matt's inappropriate private messages. Decide for yourself whether the elder's decision to place Matt Chandler on a leave of absence and not force him to step down permanently was justified. Quote, a few months ago, an individual approached the village church's lead pastor, Matt Chandler, with concerns about the way he was using direct messaging on social media with a woman who was not his wife. The elders commissioned an independent law firm to conduct a review of Matt's messaging history across social media platforms, cell phone, and email. The investigator's report led the elders to conclude that Matt violated our internal social media use policies, and more importantly that, while the overarching pattern of his life has been above reproach, he failed to meet the First Timothy standard for elders of being above reproach in this instance. In this case, while the messages were not romantic or sexual in nature, the frequency and familiarity of the messages crossed a line. They revealed that Matt did not use language appropriate for a pastor, and he did not model a behavior that we expect from him. While the elders believe that this did not rise to the level of disqualification, we do hold elders to a higher standard of behavior. The elders concluded, and Matt agreed, that Matt's behavior was a sign of unhealth in his life, and that the best course of action would be for him to take a leave of absence from teaching and preaching at the village church. Matt's leave of absence is both disciplinary and developmental, which allows him to focus on growing greater awareness in this area. The timeline for his return will be dictated by the expectations the elders have laid out for his development. End quote. How should Christians respond to an issue like this? One thing Christians must not do, which, unfortunately, many are doing, is to rejoice or celebrate. Sadly, many Christians on social media who don't like Matt Chandler, mainly because of his woke ideology, want to see his downfall. This is wrong and unchristian. It's natural to be disappointed when you learn that a Christian pastor has engaged in sinful behavior unbefitting any Christian, let alone a pastor. 
At the same time, make an effort to extend grace. More importantly, remember that Jesus is the center of Christianity, not preachers. Remember who you serve and adore when you express your frustration. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, not preachers. How should pastors and Christians in general guard themselves against sexual sins? And if you don't want to fall into immorality, then you have to make sure you don't have impure thoughts. Because if you cultivate impure thoughts, if you purposely put yourself in a position to expose yourself to the things that produce impure thoughts, you're playing with fire, obviously. So you go from immoral behavior back to what causes that, which is impure thinking. And then the next word is passion. And then behind that is the word evil desire, or the term evil desire. Evil desire reaches down a little bit deeper into what we really are. We're susceptible to passion because built into our fallen flesh is evil desire. What can we all learn from Matt Chandler's inappropriate interaction with a woman? Number one, guard your heart. Do not give room to the devil because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeing whom he may devour. 1 Peter 5 verse 8. How can you guard your heart? By filling your heart with the word of God. Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. Psalm 119, verse 11. Number 2. Set boundaries in your life and stay as far away from the boundary as possible, because if you don't, you will cross the line way before you realize it. Social media is destroying many Christian marriages and families. Number 3. Maintain open communication with your spouse if you are married. Do not keep secrets from your spouse, especially if you struggle with sexual temptations such as lust and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Ephesians 5 verse 11. When you communicate your struggle to your spouse, they can commit to praying for you, but also keep you accountable. We pray that genuine repentance would take place in Matt's heart and that the enemy will not capitalize on this incident to sow the seed of division at the village church. 